And I would now like to introduce the counselors for the years 2016-2017. Ward 1, Timothy Cruz. <laughs> Thomas Monaghan. Mark Free, Dennis Ianeri. Mark <laughs> Four, Paul Studensky. Mark <laughs> Five, Ann Borgard. Mark <laughs> Six, John Lally. Zach. <laughs> Council is at large, Shana Barnes. <laughs> Winthrop H. Fowle, Jr. Moses M. Rodriguez. School Committee, Ward 1, Thomas J. Minicello, Georgia. <laughs> Ward 2, Lisa Plant. <laughs> Ward 3, Mark S. D'Agostino. <laughs> Ward 4, Brent Gormley. Five, Judy Sullivan. Ward <laughs> six, Joyce J. Azak. Ward <laughs> seven, Timothy J. Sullivan. <laughs> Please all be seated. begin the process of the election of the President Pro Tem by her nomination. Ms. Weck, I'd like to nominate Councilor Dennis Irineri from Ward 3. Mr. Clerk, I'd like to second that motion. We have a close of the nominations. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I would like to close nominations. Okay. The election of the President Pro Tem, Councilor Irineri, Nominated by Councillor Studensky, seconded by Councillor Sullivan. Councillor Bards closed nominations. Roll call, please. Asap. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Beauregard. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Ionary. Yes. Farwell. Yes. Lally. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Studensky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes. Eleven for Councillor Ionary. Councillor Ionary is the uh, President Pro Tem. Council Dianeri, to take the podium, please. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Clerk, and I thank you, my uh, colleagues, for allowing me to be the president pro temp today as the outgoing president of the City Council for this past year. And I want to take time just to thank everybody for being here today and participating in our inaugural ceremonies here for our mayor, our city council, and our school committee as we begin another year, two more years as our term will be. So with that all being said, I want to also take time to wish all of you a healthy, and I mentioned healthy first, happy new year and a prosperous new year to each and every single one of us. So for all of our elected officials that are going to be sworn in today, a nice round of applause for them as well. Thank you.
At this time, I'm going to appoint Councils Azak, Cruz, Rodriguez, and Beauregard in Moynihan to examine credentials of the newly elected Council and School Committee members. Elected officials, please have your credentials out. Get in on the game. <coughs> Thank you. I checked that out twice. So did you or I? It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, the credentials are in order. Very good. The credentials are in order. So at this time, I will place that report uh, on uh, on file. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Councilors. Thank you. Thank you. And just before I move to my next um, point here, I do want to just take time to introduce. We have a couple of former mayors that have joined us here this morning, and I appreciate that. Former Mayor John T. Units is here with us. I also want to introduce another good friend of ours to the city of Brockton, former Mayor James Harrington. And I know I'll listen to it afterwards, but he, he does deserve the dual right of being introduced. He's our new city councilor at large, and he was a former mayor, former Mayor Winthrop Fowler. At this time, I'm going to appoint Councilors Lally, Monaghan, Azak, and Fowl to notify the Mayor-elect that the Council has formed a temporary organization and is ready for administration of the oath of office and to receive his inaugural address. At this time, those uh, Councilors will go down to, uh, to bring the Mayor up, and we're going to take a brief recess at this point. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to ask everybody to, um, excuse me, remain standing as we're going to have, and I apologize, uh, the invocation we're going to have by Rabbi Ross, he, unfortunately he's un unable to attend here uh, this morning, and we got word of that just uh, uh, very late this morning as, as well. So at this time, I'm going to have the clerk uh, perform the duties of the, uh, perform the duties of oath of office to, to the mayor. Mr. Clerk. Insert your name after I and repeat after me. I, I, Bill Carpenter, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and will support the Constitution thereof, and will support the Constitution thereof. So help me God. So help me God. I, I, Bill Carpenter, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me all of the duties incumbent upon me as the mayor to the city of Brockton as the mayor to the city of Brockton according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability and understanding and understanding agreeably to the rules and regulations agreeably to the rules and regulations of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts and the ordinances of the city of Brockton and the ordinances of the city of Brockton so help me God so help me God I, I, Bill Carpenter, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. Congratulations. To you. Thank you.
this time, I'll ask everybody to please be seated. And pardon me for the raspy voice, but I had a, a terrible cold this past week, so it's much better, trust me. But in any case, uh, at this particular time, I, I do want to take a moment of silence or two for uh, family members, relatives, friends, co-workers, and especially uh, some of our own colleagues that used to work in, this, in these chambers that we lost these past several months, and that's former Ward 2 Council and State Senator Thomas Kennedy, former City Councilor at Large Peter Aziaf, and as you all know, just about 14 days ago, we lost former Ward 1 Councilor and School Committee Member Peter Marciano. So I would ask that you just bow your heads and have a moment of peace, please. Thank you for that, and, and I note that just on a personal note that if my father was here today, he'd be very, very pleased, not only with me, but he'd be pleased, he'd be celebrating his 89th birthday, so he, may he be remembered as well. <coughs> and with that being said, um, I'm going to ask the members of the City Council to please stand and answer present when your name is called by the clerk. Timothy Cruz. Present. Thomas Monahan. Present. Dennis Ianeri. Present. Paul F. Studinsky. Present. Ann Borga. Present. John Lally. Present. Shirley Azak. Present. Council Lodge Shana Barnes. Present. Winthrop H. Fowle, Jr. Present. Moses M. Rodriguez. Present. Robert F. Sullivan. Present. And at this time, the clerk is going to administer the oath of office to the city council, and then they will also sign the oath book at the end. Will you raise your right hand, insert your name after I, and repeat after me. I, Dennis Aranieri, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, to support the Constitution thereof, to support the Constitution thereof, help me God. So help me God. I, I, Dennis Aranieri, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will faithfully and impartially, that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform, discharge and perform all the duties and Upon me, all the all duties, all the duties incumbent, incumbent upon me, as a member of the Brockton City Council, as a member of the Brockton City, City Council, according to the best of my ability and understanding, according to the best of my ability and understanding, understanding, agreeably to the rules and regulations of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, agreeably to the rules and regulations of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the City of Brockton, and the ordinances of the City of Brockton. So help me God. God. I, I, I surely do that. solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support, support the Constitution, Constitution of the United States. States. Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Congratulations. Nice round of applause for our <laughs> new city council. this time I'm, I'm going to introduce a few other dignitaries that are here that I've noticed in the audience so if I did miss somebody I apologize I tried to keep track of it the best that I could I did see State Senator Michael Brady here Michael is here somewhere <laughs> notice State Representative Claire Cronin was present here as well I did notice Plymouth County Register of Deeds, John Buckley. <laughs> this gentleman here, Plymouth County Clerk of Courts, former state representative, former senator, former counselor at large, former dog catcher, uh, no, uh, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> my good friend, former state senator, Bob Creed. Also notice that he's here with his lovely wife, former state representative Geraldine Creedon as well. We also have former Ward 3 uh, City Councilor Jerry Creedon. No, I'm Jerry Creedon. Jerry Cassidy, I apologize, Jerry. My, I apologize. And we also have Southeastern Regional School Committee member Mark Lindy. We also have uh, Greg Hanley from the uh, Plymouth County Commissioners is present. <laughs> and we also have former uh, uh, Jack Ridd, and uh, he's a former county commissioner as well. He was here, and I think he still is. <laughs> and also an old friend of the city as well. We have a uh, former judge and former state representative, Mark Lawton, is present as well. I also have here, I believe, Abington Selectman Alex Zenzo. I hope I pronounced it right. <laughs> and we also have our former city council from Ward 6 and state representative Michelle Dubois. I was just also uh, told by the city clerk that the good sheriff of Plymouth County is here, Sheriff McDonald. Thank you for being here. <laughs> if I left anyone out, I'm, I apologize. It's, it's not easy to uh, try to see who's here and who isn't. But in any case, at this point in time, uh, we're going to have a, um, a prayer, and I'm going to ask you to please stand, and we're going to have it from our good friend here in the city of Brockton, Reverend Michael Walker. Ever-living God, let us seek justice and live every day of our lives. We thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Amen.
No matter what type of day it is, the uh, no matter what type of day it is, the Reverend Walker always knows how to put a smile on your face, no matter what. <laughs> it does not matter, it does not. But in any case, now at this particular time, we're going to hear from our Honorable Mayor as he's going to deliver to us, to the City of Brockton, to the residents here, his inaugural address. So, ladies and gentlemen, members of the City Council, School Committee, all the elected dignitaries, it gives me a great honor and a great privilege to introduce to you our Mayor of the City of Brockton, Mr. William Bill Carpenter. Mayor Carpenter. I think that may be the nicest reception I've ever received in this hall. <laughs> Perhaps this would be a good time for me to announce that I am a candidate for re-election in two years. <laughs> Mr. Clerk, members of the clergy, colleagues, family and friends, welcome and thank you for being here. I would like to expend a, extend a special welcome to our five new members of the school committee, really four new members with Mr. Sullivan returning for a second tour of duty. And I'd also like to welcome the three new members of the City Council. Councillor Beauregard in Ward 5, my home ward for 27 years and the ward I had the privilege of representing on the school committee for four years. Councillor Lally in Ward 6. Jack, if you need a note for missing school today, just stop by my <laughs> office. Later, okay? I'm going to hold you to that. <laughs> Don't worry, he's a designated driver after this, yeah. <laughs> And a special welcome back to Mayor Farwell, who returns as a council at large after a brief 20-year hiatus. <laughs> it's also a pleasure for me to welcome our state legislative delegation, Representative Dubois, Representative Cronin, and Senator Brady. And my personal thanks and appreciation to the former mayors joining us this morning. Mayor Farwell, Mayor Units, and Mayor Harrington, they all slept much better than I did last night. Most importantly, thank you to my family, my children, and my partner in life, Julie. Thank you for making the sacrifices that you do every day to allow me to keep working at this job for a little while longer. And I feel particularly blessed and thankful to have my dad here with me today to share this moment. I am truly excited for the opportunity to continue to serve as your mayor. Ladies and gentlemen, if Brockton is to succeed and thrive as a 21st century city, we must make our city government work better. To my colleagues on the city council, for city government to work better, we must work better together. The campaign is over and now it is time to govern. The residents of Brockton want all of their elected leaders to work together in the best interests of the city and they deserve no less. We don't always have to agree, but we do always need to work together. And counselors, today I pledge to do everything that I can to work cooperatively with you as together we take on the challenges that face this city. Under the pressure of increasing budget shortfalls, we must embrace and invest in technology while also, while also adopting best practices so that government can operate more efficiently while still providing superior customer service to our constituents. Budget constraints will compel us to find ways to do more with less. We are making positive strides in adopting both technology and best practices. Today, residents can report problems to city agencies and track their response at any time using C-Click-Fix. Some police reports can now be filed online freeing up our offices to remain on patrol instead of doing paperwork. We are actively developing our capability to issue permits and licenses online to create a more business-friendly environment in Brockton, while also expanding our capability to accept payments online to save residents the time and inconvenience of a trip to City Hall. Brockton has recently entered into a community compact with the Commonwealth that will bring both technical assistance and grant funding to support the city's efforts to develop financial and planning best practices. 
Our ongoing working relationship with the UMass Boston Collins Center continues to pay dividends as they assist us in implementing IT solutions into city departments. We are prepared to work alongside you as we enter the new year, facing the challenges presented by homelessness, pedestrian safety, and drug addiction. In the weeks ahead, we'll be announcing the details of four different initiatives to reduce homelessness in Brockton. Champions United in Ending Family Homelessness, the piloting of a daytime resource center, a pledge to end veterans homelessness in Brockton, and the introduction of our new homelessness task force as part of our overall downtown action strategy. The work of our pedestrian safety task force is well underway with several projects centered around engineering, education, and enforcement, including a half million dollar grant from MassDOT to fund pedestrian safety improvements at several high-risk locations. As we enter 2016, Brockton finds itself at the forefront of the opiate addiction crisis. During the past year, our first responders answered over 1,000 overdose calls. And despite their heroic efforts, we suffered over 100 overdose deaths in the city of Brockton during the past year. We are committed to reducing both the supply and demand of illicit drugs in this city. The Brockton Police Department, led by the Narcotics and Gang Detectives Units, continues to aggressively pursue drug dealers. In 2015, the Brockton Police executed 71 entry search warrants a 10% increase over the previous year and double the number of raids conducted in 2013. Each one of these warrants represents a costly and time-consuming investigation, but it is a price that we must be willing to pay to get this poison out of our neighborhoods. But while we are fighting to reduce the supply of drugs coming into the city, we are equally committed to compassionately helping those individuals suffering from the disease of addiction. Later this month, we'll be announcing the details of the Champion Plan, an outreach effort combining the resources of both public safety and social service agencies with volunteers and treatment partners to engage and to support those individuals who desire to seek treatment services. We believe the Champion Plan will be the most far-reaching and innovative effort of its kind to assist those suffering from substance abuse disorders and it will serve as a model for other communities across the Commonwealth. During 2015, I was honored to be selected by Governor Baker as the only Baker to serve on the governor's, as the only mayor to serve in the governor's opioid working group. I'm proud to stand beside the governor as he leads the fight to respond to the opioid epidemic. There is no challenge we face together greater or a mission more important than reducing violent crime. Just a few days ago, President Obama declared a national epidemic of gun violence. Recently, Chief Crowley and I attended a gun violence summit hosted by Boston Mayor Marty Walsh that brought together mayors and police chiefs from across New England to strategize responses to gun violence in our communities. Here in Brockton, we are investing in technology, adopting new strategies, and sharing intelligence and resources with other law enforcement agencies at the local, county, state, and federal levels. During the past year, in partnership with Plymouth County Sheriff Joe McDonald, we've acquired APHIS, the latest fingerprint technology that allows our investigators to get fingerprint matches within minutes instead of the months that they previously had to wait for fingerprint search results. In partnership with the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, Brockton is one of 14 communities that ATF is now providing with ballistic support, not just detracing the origin of firearms used in crimes, but also providing fast response on NIVAN's ballistic testing of shell casings. This ATF ballistic support is critically important to our detectives, particularly in connecting shell casings found at different scenes to the same firearm. And just over three months ago, we deployed shot spotter gunshot technology over a five square mile area of Brockton that is now allowing our patrol officers to get to the exact location of a shots fired incident while witnesses and evidence are still there. 
Our Brockton Police Department gang unit is constantly developing and sharing intelligence to identify and target violent repeat offenders in our city. We know that a small group of 40 to 50 individuals at any given time is responsible for the vast majority of gun violence committed in Brockton. We will continue to aggressively, relentlessly pursue those criminals who threaten the safety of the law-abiding residents of this city. We've recently created a crime analyst position for the police department. The crime analyst will collect crime statistics and data, then convert the data into reports that the chief and his superior officers will be able to use to identify target areas to direct our limited resources to, while also supporting management decisions on staffing and budgets. This utilization of real-time crime data is the foundation of the ComStat system utilized by the New York City Police Department that Chief Crowley, Lieutenant LeGrice, and I were able to witness firsthand during our visit with NYPD Commissioner Bill Bratton this past August. While investing in technology, implementing new strategies, and utilizing intelligence are all key components of our crime-fighting efforts, none are as important as getting more boots on the ground. We need more cops on the street. Our nine newly hired police officers will be completing their training in the next 30 days to join our patrol ranks. Meanwhile, we are in the civil service selection process to hire 14 additional officers. When those 14 new hires join the force later this year, it will bring our total staffing to 196 police officers, the largest number of police officers that we have had on the job in over 25 years. Reducing crime is not as simple as just hiring more police officers. The threats to our children of drug addiction and gun violence are community problems. The real solutions are long-term and community-based. We must be investing in our children, helping them to make good decisions, and raising them with a sense of hope and opportunity. Making city government work better also means investing resources in reducing quality of life crimes while cleaning up and stabilizing our neighborhoods. We've established proactive motorcycle patrols and re-established bicycle patrol officers targeting crimes such as street-level drug dealing, loitering, and prostitution that impact the quality of life for families in this city. During the past two years, we've, removed, we've reduced graffiti with our graffiti removal team, established a needle cleanup program that includes a needle removal hotline and targeted vacant properties for code enforcement. We know that a key to stabilizing neighborhoods is reclaiming green spaces for families and children. The past two years have seen us invest in the new City Hall Plaza green space, restore an abandoned playground on Mulberry Street, and complete a three-quarter million dollar renovation of the James Edgar Playground. We are preparing to break ground in the spring on a new Ralsco Park on the site of a former vacant brownfield, and most recently, we've successfully secured a quarter of a million dollar grant from the state to restore Keith Park at the corner of South Main Street and Plain Street. One project at a time, we are building a livable city. Our biggest initiative to increase public safety in the upcoming year will be twofold. The establishment of a citywide network of video surveillance cameras combined with the replacement of every street light in the city with LED lighting. We've been able to coordinate the resources of the DPW, fire and police departments, parking authorities, school department, and Brockton 21st Century Corp to strategically locate and install 100 video surveillance cameras across the city, 84 new cameras plus the refurbishing of 16 older cameras. The first 11 cameras are already up and the project will be completed by the end of this summer. Utilizing both wireless and dark fiber technology, the Brockton Police will have direct viewing access through all 100 cameras. 
Simultaneously, the DPW will oversee the replacement of all the city's streetlights with new LED lighting. The new LED lights will not only use less than half of the electricity of the old lights, but they will also shine 50% brighter, reducing crime while also increasing safety for pedestrians, bicyclists, and motorists. The energy savings of the LED lights will pay for their cost in three and a half years while coming with a 10-year warranty, guaranteeing the city a substantial savings on energy costs while making the city safer. The audit of the existing street lights is complete and the project is now in the design phase. Once the consultant has completed the design, we will be bringing the project forward to the City Council for approval of the appropriation and borrowing to fund the purchase and installation of the LED lighting. I look forward to working with the Council to get the new LED lighting installed this year. A strong working partnership between myself, the City Council and the School Committee will be essential for us to survive the upcoming fiscal 2017 budget process. Since 2010, the city has suffered from a structural budget deficit due to an $8.5 million annual cut in state local aid to Brockton. And folks, that money is never coming back. Over the past three years, the cost of running city government has increased $33 million, an average increase of $11 million per year, creating an automatic deficit in our budget with no changes. The forecast for the upcoming fiscal year 17 budget is even more bleak, particularly in the school department budget. The scheduled pay raises for BEA teachers now in year three of their collective bargaining agreement this year projects to $8.1 million. Think about that number. Pay raises alone for our teaching staff will exceed $8 million this year. Add an additional $1.3 million in pay increases for the non-certified school employees, and we are looking at a $9.4 million in pay raises just on the school side of the budget. That means that we're almost $10 million in the hole before we even begin building the rest of the budget. That is money we will not have. There will be tough decisions to be made as we will not overcome this budget deficit without painful budget cuts and tax increases and no one wants a tax increase. The large nonprofit corporations in Brockton can no longer turn their backs on this city's financial crisis. Let me be clear, I'm not asking for help from churches and volunteer organizations. I'm only asking the city's 20 largest nonprofit corporations who have purchased millions of dollars of commercial real estate to make voluntary payments to the city of just 10 to 20% of what their property tax bill would be. 10 to 20 cents on the dollar to help us pay for the public safety resources that they are utilizing. I will pledge today that all voluntary pilot payments made to the city by the nonprofit corporations in fiscal year 16 will be added to local school funding to help offset anticipated teacher layoffs. It's time for the large nonprofits with their multi-million dollar budgets and executives earning six-figure incomes to step up and help us save our schools. It's clear that we can no longer afford to rely solely on insufficient state aid and property taxes to balance the budget. We must develop additional sources of revenue, and we're doing that. We've generated over a million dollars during the past year by selling off idle city property acquired through tax foreclosure. This year, we will collect $200,000 in licensing fees on electronic billboards. A host community agreement with the medical marijuana facility will pay the city a minimum of $100,000. A solar field being developed on the Thatcher Street landfill will begin generating an estimated $250,000 per year, and a tax title auction scheduled for the spring should spur a collection of unpaid property taxes. There is no question that we desperately need the guaranteed $4 million per year revenue generated from the gas-fired electric plant. We also must continue to lobby for a resort casino complex at the fairgrounds that would pay a projected $12 million per year to the city, 
eliminating our annual budget deficit, and funding the hiring of police officers, firefighters, and school teachers, while also helping to finance the rebuilding of our crumbling roadways. The real solution to our budget woes lies in expanding our revenue base, creating real new tax growth revenue, not just going back to our existing taxpayers and asking them to pay more and more. This is why economic development and planning to create jobs and spur investment in Brockton has been a primary focus of our first term in office. We've built a team of professionals working together to attract investment, create jobs, and revitalize our city's business districts. This morning, I asked the City Council and our state legislative delegation to continue to partner with us in making the dream of a thriving Brockton become a reality. We will soon be officially submitting the Brockton Downtown Action Strategy to the City Council for your input and consideration. We have also released Brockton 2025, a 10 year game plan creating 12 economic development districts across the city. The work that has begun downtown is now extending south to the Campello and Edison Brook districts and will continue to all four quadrants of Brockton. We will soon be submitting to the City Council several pieces of critical legislation for Brockton's future and ask for your swift consideration and approval. The Downtown Urban Revitalization Plan will give the City the authority to implement our Downtown Brockton Action Strategy. A number of the City Councilors here this morning have been directly involved in the development of this plan. We now ask for your endorsement. We will also be seeking your approval of a zoning cleanup ordinance that will eliminate inconsistencies and ambiguities in many of our zoning ordinances, making it more attractive for developers and business owners to invest their private capital here in Brockton. This ordinance will be the precursor to developing a citywide comprehensive master plan that will create a 30-year blueprint for the city's business districts and neighborhoods. This morning, we also ask for your speedy consideration of the expansion of the existing 40-yard district downtown. The 40-yard district encourages and incentivizes mixed-use development in the downtown and is a key to unlocking the development potential of vacant and unutilized commercial properties. Councillor Sullivan, you were the sponsor of the legislation that created our existing 40-yard district, and I ask you now to lead this effort to expand our 40 yard district so that together we can unlock the opportunities for private investment in downtown Brockton. Perhaps the most exciting private development project of the new year will be the redevelopment of the LeBaron Foundry site by the D.W. Clark Company, a project for which the City Council recently approved a tax increment financing plan. This project <coughs> represents a $6 million private investment that will convert a polluted, abandoned five and a half acre site into a brand new advanced manufacturing facility. Not only does this project revitalize a blighted area, but it will immediately bring 50 jobs into the city and create an additional 25 more new jobs. In order to continue to bring companies like D.W. Clark to Brockton, we must bridge the skills gap by joining with partners like the Brockton Area Workforce Investment Board and Southeastern Regional Vocational Technical High School to develop our workforce with the necessary skills and training to attract employers to invest in Brockton. Consistent with the Baker Administration's urban agenda, we must bring economic development and education together to achieve real workforce development and the place to create that partnership with education is in a downtown Brockton State College campus. Over the past two years, we've begun making changes to position the city of Brockton for success. Let's work together to build on that success, to create jobs, to ensure safe and clean neighborhoods, to provide our children with the opportunities created by a quality public school education 
and to sustain essential city services. While traveling with Bridgewater State University President Fred Clark recently, he reminded me of a quote from former U.S. Congressman Joe Moakley. Congressman Moakley said, Serving in office is like living in the neighborhood. You can't impress your neighbor unless he's got some faith in you. You've got to build relationships. You've got to let people know you. You've got to do a lot of listening. And you've got to realize that nobody has a monopoly on new ideas. As your mayor, I will strive to follow Congressman Moakley's model for leadership as we work together to keep Brockton moving forward. Let's go to work. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and uh, everybody please be seated. <clears throat> and at this time, an error on me because I jumped ahead. We should have the school committee in place before we did that, so I guess we know how Steve Murray must have felt, uh, obviously, but uh, in any case, um, I did not mean to do that. I just jumped ahead. And at this time, the uh, clerk is going to call each school committee member by name and please answer present, and then you're going to come up uh, afterwards after you sworn in and sign the oath book. Mr. Clark. Ward 1, Thomas J. Minicello, Jr. Present. Ward 2, Lisa Plant. Present. Ward 3, Mark Castino. I'm sorry about that, Mark. Present. Ward 4, Brent Gormley. Present. Ward 5, Judy Sullivan. Present. Ward 6, Joyce J. Azak. Present. Ward 7, Timothy J. Sullivan. Present. Okay. Would you come down by ward and sign them up for me, please? Did you do the oath first? Tony, Tony. You guys are here. Ward 2, Lisa Plant. Ward 3, Mark D. Augustine. Ward 4, Brett Gormley. <coughs> Ward 5, Judy Sullivan. Ward 6, Joyce J. Azak. Thank you. Ward 7, Timothy J. Sullivan. Okay. 
if you remain uh, standing, I'll administer the oath from office. Raise your right hand, insert your name after I, and repeat after me. I, I do solemnly swear that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. I will support the Constitution thereof. I will support the Constitution thereof. Oh, help me God. Oh, help me God. I. I, I, I solemnly swear, who solemnly I swear, that I will faithfully and impartially, that I will faithfully and impartially discharge and perform, discharge and perform all the duties incumbent upon me, all the duties incumbent upon me, as a member of the Brockton School Committee, as a member of the Brockton School Committee, according to the best of my ability and understanding, according to the best of my ability and understanding, agreeably to the rules and regulations of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, agreeably to the rules and regulations of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the City of Brockton. And the ordinance of the city of Brockton. So help me God. So help me God. I, I, Timothy J. Sullivan, solemnly swear, solemnly swear, I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. Congratulations, ladies. And gentlemen. to at this point I'm going to ask everybody to please stand for a benediction by Father Joseph Drake. Prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father we thank you. We thank you for the commitment, the desire, and the willingness to put forth the best effort for these men and women who desire to serve this community of Brockton. We ask that you bless all of them Give them a spirit of cooperation so that they may truly work as one. Help them to be mindful of the most vulnerable in our community. And help them to have a generous spirit, not only in their meetings, but in all the work that they do. May your spirit guide and direct them so that they may truly bear great fruit in the work that you've called them to do, to build up this community to give people a spirit of hope and to help us all to be the people you desire us to be. One people, looking out for one another and willing to give of our best so that all, especially the most vulnerable, will be served and lifted up. We ask all of these prayers through your holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Ask everybody to be seated for a moment. Looking over to make sure that we didn't eliminate anything else. It's the schedule of us. This, but at this time, um, we come to a conclusion of our inaugural uh, ceremonies with the swearing in of the mayor and the city council and the school committee. We're going to be taking about a 10 minute recess. The city council will uh, reconvene in about 10 minutes. And at that point in time, we'll come back in and we'll elect a new City Council President. You can uh, stay if you wish and come back in. Uh, if not, uh, you can actually be outside to, to mingle, but uh, we're going to reconvene for about uh, 10 minutes or so. Yes, okay. Got a call for a recess, and we, I want to thank you very much for being uh, participants. Yeah. And if you want to, uh, if you want to head up to the lunch now, uh, you, you may do so, but uh, it'll be just about 10 minutes, we'll reconvene and we'll uh, finish the, the business that we have to do with the City Council. So at this time, we're in a recess. Council's back in session, please. This time, we're going to open up the election of the City Council President for the year 2016. Council president, I am going to nominate Ward 1 uh, City Council Timothy Cruz to be President. Second. Council Stadinsky. President, I move to close the nominations. Second. Uh, okay, yeah. Dominations have been made and properly, uh, <coughs> properly second. And at this particular time, we're going to call the roll for uh, City Council President. Asad. Councilor Cruz. Barnes. Councilor Timothy Cruz. Beauregard. Councilor Timothy Cruz. Cruz. Councilor Timothy Cruz. Pioneer. Timothy Cruz. Farwell. Councilor Cruz. Lally. Councilor Cruz. Monaghan. 
Timothy J. Cruz. Rodriguez. Councilor Cruz. Sedinsky. Councilor Cruz. Sullivan. Councilor Tim Cruz. Levin. Councilor Cruz, would you please stand as you are the new president for the incoming year 2016. to take your position. Counselor, it's yours. Thank use you. Use it often and use it wisely. <laughs> Please, watch the block. I had to get a new one because the other president broke it. <laughs> I won't say who the last president was that <laughs> broke it, but uh, <laughs> Good luck. Councilor Sullivan get that Irish temper going up. Congratulations, <laughs> if you could stay here for a minute, I'd like to take a minute and Good present you. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Before we move on to this year, on behalf of this past council, three of whom members are no longer with us, uh, well, they're with us just not here today. <laughs> but uh, I want to thank you. You've done a wonderful job uh, shepherding the council this past year. I know it can be like herding cats at times, but uh, you did a great job. And on behalf of the entire council, thank you very much. Thank you, Council. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And just in brief, it was a great honor and a great privilege to serve as the council president for 2015. But as every president knows, when the term comes to an end, I think we all say it's nice to be able to sit back down and be a part of the whole process the right way. And, and you are the right way as council president, but now we can go to work and do what we have to do to move the city forward. So with that being said, I appreciate it. Thank you. Healthy, happy new year to all. Best wishes to the new incoming president. I'm sure he'll do a fine job. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. I'd like to th uh, first of all congratulate the mayor and the school committee people. Who, they did get sworn in finally, didn't they? Uh, I'll be very brief, although I have extra time to speak because uh, generally we put about 20 minutes aside for Reverend Walker to give his blessing and he gave us the abbreviated version today, so we have lots of time left. But I won't keep you here. And by the way, that's something you can know on most meeting nights also. We won't be here. We won't be here a long time. We'll get to the point. We're going to run meetings that are on point and uh, on focus. And uh, I'm very proud to be up here. Uh, Councilor Ranier, you, your father would have been proud of you. And my father, who worked with your Absolutely. father for 30 oh, years, wow. would be proud also of me right now. And uh, I do want to take a moment to thank my wife and my daughter who are here today. My other children yeah. can't be here. My sisters and uh, brother-in-law, all of us who are up here know, and the mayor mentioned it in his speech, that uh, uh, the people that bear the brunt of the work are our children and our, uh, our families, and uh, we're out front doing it, but they're the ones answering the phone all day, and they're the ones who are missing us. And uh, I, again, on behalf of all of us, I thank all our families, and, uh, and again, really a beautiful way to start the new year with Councilor Rodriguez's new grandson here today. Being, oh, yes. being sworn in, and uh, it's great to see him here today. And I think the only thing I do want to say, the mayor mentioned to it, we've spoken. Uh, I will work hard on your behalf to make sure that the uh, lines of communication are open. I was excited that he talked about not only the 40 yard but the uh, streetlight process that Councilor Sullivan started years ago, brought this idea forth to the city and saved the city hundreds of thousand of dollars so far. And will save us more in the future and, uh, and make the city safer. And that's when the city works best, when we work together. We look at individual issues and uh, look at those issues, move on. We've got uh, three new members, very exciting. We run the gamut <laughs> from 20 years, 20 years out and a, the, all the uh, knowledge that a former mayor can bring to us <laughs> to all the fresh ideas that an 18-year-old can bring to us. And Anne's been working so hard with the libraries and all, all these years. So these are not inexperienced people coming. These are people with great ideas, and uh, we're looking forward to working with you. <laughs> and especially when you'll be recognized for the first time around August to speak. So. <laughs> okay. uh, I believe we, uh, just to bookkeeping, we do have our meeting this coming Monday night, 8 o'clock. We have our first council meeting. All these people won't be here, but yeah. they'll be home watching us on TV and remember that. Uh, I believe, uh, Mr. Clerk, could you read the committees for 2016? Finance Committee, all city councilors, 
Accounts Committee, Dennis Ianeri, Chair, Shirley A. Zach, Ann Beauregard, Winfrey Fowle, John Lally. Beautification Committee, Shirley A. Zach. Community Schools, Shade and Barnes. Audience Committee, Thomas Monahan, Chair, Shirley A. Zach, Dennis Ianeri, Paul Studensky, Robert Sullivan. Public Safety Committee, Robert Sullivan, Chair, Shana Barnes, Winthrop Fowle, Moses Rodriguez, and Thomas Monahan. Real Estate, Moses Rodriguez, Chair, Shana Barnes, Ann Beauregard, John Lally, and Paul Studensky. Traffic Commission, Shirley Azak, and Moses Rodriguez. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Clerk. Uh, and actually, thank you for uh, you and Mark Day for the work you did today. Uh, I know this is a a tough day to put together. Uh, did a great job. I want to thank everybody who came today. Yeah. And no further business. We're adjourned.